Hi, welcome back to Landscape and Garden Secrets, tips from the pros with Sterling Landscape. Joining me today is Eva, and together we are going to teach you how to select good plant material, healthy plant material. Uh, today we're at Cloverdale Nursery, and we're going to take you through and teach you the basics of potted material, bald and burlap material, and then we will take you back to our yard and show you how to plant properly. So we'll be back with all that and more when we return. Landscape and Garden Secrets, Tips from the Pros at Sterling is brought to you by Basilite Concrete Products, working with you to increase your home's livability for entertaining and relaxation. Idaho Patio, your premier source for outdoor living products and services. Idaho Patio, going above and beyond. Cloverdale Nursery, providing sod, turf, grass plants, trees, and shrubs to the Treasure Valley area. International Stone, the premier provider of natural stone from all 50 states and the world. Silverline Systems, concrete beautification and home organization. And by Sterling Landscape Design, Construction and Maintenance. Whether you want a full backyard makeover or a personal gardener to keep your flower beds, there is no project too large or too small. It's no wonder that our customers and design partners are singing our praises. The first thing we're going to go over is plant selection. And today we have two specimens of a clump river birch. And so we're going to teach you the basics of selecting for a clump tree. Um, we have brought one in, which I will use to teach you what to avoid. Eva, you have Cloverdale's awesome yes. tree, so take them through it. All right, so you can see this tree here has uh, four nicely spaced branches and they're all growing outwards away from each other. Um, this is what you want to look for in a clump. So um, when you would get this one home you would want to clip, clip these off so that you don't have any potential problems in the future with rubbing and growing together. Um, otherwise a very nicely shaped tree and what you want to look for. And over here I have brought to you um, a specimen and I'm going to teach you what to avoid with it. So as you can see this thing is an absolute disaster. Um, it was supposed to be a clump. You can see that we've got four branches that are, are entangled in each other. They're spinning around each other. They're obviously all touching, all rubbing. Um, not much of a clump, right? Uh, up here uh, somebody has gone through with a bit of a hack job uh, pruning. Uh, I, I, I guess to maybe improve upon it, which was unsuccessful. So uh, you definitely, you don't get any of the healthy spacing that you want to look for uh, for a birch and you really don't get the vigor. Um, this is pretty unacceptable. So avoid something like this at all costs. Don't spend your money on that. So today I want to take you through how to select for a weeping cherry. Weeping cherries are very popular in this spring with their beautiful white or pink blossoms. So what makes these unique is they're grafted onto what we call a standard, which is a trunk of one particular cherry. And the top, the weeping part, is actually grafted onto this trunk of, of a different species and so what happens is you'll have the trunk from the propagator and and it'll be something like this and then the top aspect of it is actually fused in together and that creates this graft point here what's unique about weeping cherries is you can get them on a short graft or you can get them on a tall graft tell them why that's important uh, right from the get-go. Well, you want to keep in mind how high you want your tree to be eventually. Um, if you buy a tree this high, this is how high it's going to be. The only height you're going to get is from these branches and how they decide to curve and grow. The trunk itself is not going to grow any farther. It's only going to get fatter get wider, and fatter. not taller. <laughs> yes. So where you want your cascade to start, it's either going to start at three feet and it will always be at three feet or you're going to start at about a six foot graft and it's always going to be 
at six foot. So that's why it's important. Um, and something very important to keep in mind for you to be aware of, if you do plant a weeping cherry that's on grafted on a standard, um, you want to pay attention to where your graft union is. And any branches growing below that graft union, you want to clip off immediately. Um, that's going to be your standard tree growing, and they will grow upright through the canopy and basically take all the life away from this weeping one and take over the tree eventually. So you want to be very aware of any of those. It'll create a huge mess. <laughs>
approximately 30 inches by 24 deep. So we're going to start by building our hole and I'll show you how the pros measure it out in the field. So joining us now is Sebastian and Tony and they are going to dig this hole for us. strapping lads here. Thank you guys. Um, we are going to tell you a little bit about ball and burlap. Uh, it comes in this wire cage and it's wrapped in the burlap and it's tied around the trunk. So a common misconception about the wire cage is that it needs to be removed. However, you should leave it on. It keeps the root ball intact. Um, it's a galvanized metal so it will deteriorate over time. So be careful when you're when you're transporting your tree to the hole. Uh, you do not want to break apart this root ball. If you break the root ball, the risk of failure increases tenfold. So um, make sure it stays all intact. We'll drop it in the hole and uh, show you where to go from there. All right. So now we are going to amend the soil. Um, you want to sure. get just enough to get a nice rich soil. A lot of the soil in the Treasure Valley is clay, so the purpose of compost is to break up those sticky clay particles and um, create some air spaces and uh, give it some organic material for nutrients for the plant. All right, so we've got a pretty good base layer here. Um, we just want to make sure our height is still good. So, Tony, you want to measure the root ball and and the hole, make sure that we're on the right track. How are we looking? Pretty good? All right, it's time to place our tree. So you can do this with, uh, with three or four friends in a heavy duty ball cart. Uh, remember these, these root balls are very heavy. Like a pro. Okay, so now we have the root ball in the hole. Uh, so we're just gonna turn it so that we have the, the side facing forward that we wanna look at. Uh, so just make sure it's adjusted before you start filling it in. And make sure your trunk is straight. So we back this way. Oh, yep, right there. And you can adjust it as you fill it also. It might be a little easier. So we're going to continue to amend our soil. The other thing that you want to do is to have, have water nearby. So you're going to be pre-moistening the soil as you fill. That'll make 
the soil less hydrophobic and it'll accept water a lot easier. And allow the water to get all the way down to the bottom of the root ball. So we're filling in with some compost to just create a rich, porous, nutritious soil for the tree. So it's very important when you're uh, backfilling your hole that you compact the soil ever so often. That way when you water it in, the soil doesn't sink. You wanna make sure that you apply enough compost uh, for good texture, for good color. Um, you don't want to have too much compost uh, or you'll create a foreign soil. And depending on what kind of compost that you're using, you may end up with a soil that's too rich uh, and cause cause a little burn so so we've left a bit of a moat around here um, we're gonna fill it with water that's gonna get all the air spaces out and pre and it will uh, allow the first phase of settling to take place depending on what kind of soil you have uh, some definitely uh, drain faster than others we've got pretty decent soil over here we're gonna be able to get it all the way through the profile but depending, until it starts to slow to drain, then go ahead and take it off, let that sink in. Okay, so our next step here is we're gonna cut away the twine and peel the burlap back so it's not gonna strangle your trunk here. Let me tell you that there's two schools of thought this way. Um, some people want to leave the ball and the burlap tied up for a year. The thing is, is most people forget and what ends up happening is that twine girdles your tree and ultimately causes the death of it. So it would be our recommendation to either do it at the time of planting when your ball is secure and your tree is well grounded or three to five months later, go back in and you can clip the cage through the top and pull the, the twine away from the trunk. We're gonna go ahead and take care of this right now. So one of the reasons that you would leave it on a little bit longer, say that, that three to five months, uh, is if you're in high winds. So if you're in high winds, you're gonna wanna leave that on a little bit longer just to make sure that that root ball stays compacted uh, so your, your tree stays healthy. So we're just gonna, well, remove some of what we can. We basically just wanna get it off the trunk here. Um, and the rest of the burlap's just gonna deteriorate in the hole and it won't even affect your tree. So leaving the burlap on around the roots, the roots are just gonna grow right through it. Um, it decomposes pretty quickly, so it has no effect on the root growth whatsoever. Usually your burlap's up a little bit higher, so take that into account when you're measuring your hole. Um, the top of this tree is just below the burlap. So you can see the burlap was up here. Uh, a couple inches down is where the crown of the, the tree is. A good pointer is just to the bottom of your tree will have a slight flare, so you want to see that slight flare above the soil line. You don't want to bury that flare. So you remember in our pruning episode, we talked about suckers. It wasn't quite the season for them, but that's what you're seeing here is a little adventitious growth from the root ball itself. Crab apples do it. Um, there's a lot of trees that do it, but, but they're notorious for it. So all you do is clip those down into the soil as far as you can. You'll be battling those with a crab apple. It's just a, a little bit of routine maintenance for them. So. so Tony's just gonna bend the edge of that cage down so they're not sticking up above your soil line there so you don't see them. Remember, you always want to be at the natural soil line. You want the tree to be planted at the level that it was either in the pot or, or in the field. We like to do a little bit of top dressing too with, uh, with our beds, with our trees. And we typically will top dress with either a compost, so 
each time it rains or each time you water, all the nutrients leach through the soil. And um, it also prevents weeds and maintains good moisture. Now that we are all watered in and everything's compacted, our trees planted, uh, I want to touch on uh, a common mistake that people make, and that's to allow the grass to grow up to the, the trunk of the tree. You want to keep a nice clearance uh, here around the tree, you know, three feet, four feet circle uh, will be good. It keeps the grass from growing up to the trunk to compete for water nutrients. And not having the grass up to the trunk of the tree will prevent you from injuring it with your line trimmer. Our question of the day comes from Michael of Boise. He wants to know if spring is the best time to plant. You can plant your trees in spring as soon as you can break ground. Um, you just want to make sure and do it early enough before the hot weather sets in. Um, fall is really the optimal time to plant because you have a long cool season for the plants to get situated before winter comes. One of the benefits to planting in the fall is that your tree is only putting down roots. It's not blooming, it's not leafing out. So it's putting all of its energy into, into roots for the new season. Um, if you get to jump on it in the spring, your benefits are, are, are just as well. You just want to make sure you get it in before it gets hot outside. Give it enough chance to establish itself. Join us next week where we will show you how Sterling takes you through the design process. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week. Landscape and Garden Secrets, Tips from the Pros at Sterling is brought to you by Basilite Concrete Products, working with you to increase your home's livability for entertaining and relaxation. Idaho Patio, your premier source for outdoor living products and services. Idaho Patio, going above and beyond. Cloverdale Nursery, providing sod, turf, grass plants, trees and shrubs to the Treasure Valley area. International Stone, the premier provider of natural stone from all 50 states and the world. Silverline Systems, concrete beautification and home organization. And by Sterling Landscape Design, Construction and Maintenance. Whether you want a full backyard makeover or a personal gardener to keep your flower beds, there is no project too large or too small. It's no wonder that our customers and design partners are singing our praises. We will. We got it.